Hello, random strangers of the internet, and welcome to my first ever video with voiceover. So today I'm making a little tutorial on construction in Kerbal Space Program and a few things you might or might not know. So the two buildings you're going to need to know about are this one and this one. This one is the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, and this is the Space Plane Hangar, or SPD. This one is generally used for making things that go up, and this one is for things that go across. There are a few important differences between the two, which I will get to later. So to start with, we're going to have a look at the VAB, because rockets are easier. So, welcome to the VAB. The first thing you'll need to know is that up here at the top left, you have various tabs for various different types of parts. So you have command pods. These are necessary. Propulsion for making things go faster. Control. Not sure what these are for. Structural parts for building the monstrous contraptions of your nightmares. Aerodynamic parts. They all may not work without an atmosphere. Utility parts. Those bits you always remember too late you didn't attach to your rocket. And science parts. So you might notice that some of the components that you can see are greyed out, such as this one and all of these engines, except this one for some reason. To start a vessel, you need to use one of the parts that isn't greyed out. So I'm going to start with a command pod. And I think we should have this one. Perfect! So, to move this around, we click on it, and we can now drag it all over the place. To rotate the camera, you can press the right mouse button and spin it around. To move up and down, you can use the scroll wheel to scroll up and down. To move up and down with a part, select the part and use the scroll wheel to move up and down. If you want to rotate your parts, select them and use W, S, A, D, Q and E to rotate them all over the place. Here's a thing I didn't know for a very long time, which is incredibly useful, which is if you hold shift, you can move things by increments. Now this command pod's all very nice, but I think it's lacking something. You want your lovely command pod to move. If you want to do this without cheating controls, you're going to need fuel. So fuel tanks come in a few different sizes. There are tiny parts, small parts, big parts, and bloody enormous parts. I'm going to start off with a nice big fuel tank. So you will notice that when you grab the fuel tank, it has little green orbs on the top and the bottom of it, and so does the command pod. These are snapping nodes, so if I move the fuel tank near to the snapping node of the command pod, it will join up. This command pod also has a snapping node on the top, so if I put it there, it will join up there as well, if that's something that you want. You can also attach parts radially, so if I take the slightly smaller fuel tank here and stick it on the side, that works just fine. So now there are a few more controls that you might want to know about. So if you look down here in the bottom left, you have two little things which are symmetry mode and angle snap. Now symmetry mode means, as it suggests, the parts gain symmetry when you snap them on. So you can see I've got three here, or if I want more, I can have six or eight. You can also use the X key to increase the level of symmetry, or you can press Shift X to decrease the level of symmetry. The next thing to talk about is angle snap mode, which is this little thing down here. So as you can see at the moment, we're on this little hexagon mode, and what that means is it'll snap to certain angles around the edge of the main fuel tank, which is all very well and good for making nice neat rockets, but sometimes you want a little bit more flexibility. So, if I click here, it will change to this circle, and what that means is I can now slide it along the edge of the part. So I've started a new spacecraft using this command pod here, and I'm going to add to it a nice sensible fuel tank and a nice sensible engine. 
So now I'm going to add a parachute to the top because we will inevitably need that. And I am going to add some landing gear like so. So now it's time to talk about tweakables. If you right click on most kinds of part, you get a tweakables menu. This lets you change various things about the part. Like I can turn the flag on the command pod on and off. I can reduce the amount of mono propellant in it to make it lighter if you don't need mono propellant. And I can reduce the amount of electric charge in it. For reasons. I can also select the fuel tanks and change the amount of fuel and oxidizer in them, which can be very useful for making planes which normally don't need oxidizer. I can select the engine and I can reduce its power. No. I can select the parachute and tell it to deploy higher up or lower down. And if I put some landing lights on my craft, I can even change the colour. So I can make a nice red, like my logo. Now we're going to have a quick look at action groups. So if you press this little tab up here, this takes you to the action groups menu. So now you can set parts to do things when you press certain keys. So like if I wanted to abort, then I can select this parachute using the left click and to, to deploy and shut down the engine when I press abort. I can also assign all of the lights to turn on when I press the number one key on my keyboard. Normally when you set things up for parts with symmetry all of their symmetrical parts will do the same thing but sometimes they don't which can be annoying who knows why. So the next tab along is the crew tab which lets you change what crew you've got in your craft, how many you want in there, whether you want Bill, Bob and Jeb, or if you want to go to the astronaut complex and just use another Kerbal. You can also, if you click here, change the mission flag. This doesn't change the flag of your profile, it just adds a new flag for the mission alone. So I think that's a pretty reasonable little craft, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a name which shall be Amaze Balls Craft 01 Wow and I will save it. You can also load craft using this or start a new craft using this. Staging! This is important. Things at the bottom happen first when you press the space bar the next thing happens. So I've moved my engine and my parachute off the same stage for what are hopefully fairly obvious reasons. Quick! To the launch pad! No, 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 no! I think that went well. So now it's time to have a look at the space plane hangar. The main important difference between this and the vehicle assembly building, other than the fact that things go along rather than up, is the kind of symmetry it uses. For example, if I have a fuel tank here and then I attach some more fuel tanks to the edge, like so, and I press X for symmetry, you can see that things are mirrored around the middle rather than having rotational symmetry and snapping around the edge. This is basically the only important difference between the space plane hangar and the VAB, but it is quite an important difference. Another more subtle difference is the way the camera moves. So whereas in the VAB, scrolling would move you up and down, in the space plane hangar, scrolling moves you in and out, and holding the middle mouse button pans you around. The last thing I want to talk to you about is sub-assemblies. So I've built this lovely rocket here, and I want to use it to take a rover into space. So I put a little docking port on the top. I attach another docking port to it, like so. Unfortunately, the VAB is rubbish for building rovers. So, for example, I want to put these wheels on so they both face to the left. Oh dear, they've got rotational symmetry. Now, what I need is mirror symmetry. And where do we get mirror symmetry? The space plane hangar, of course. Now the important thing about what I'm going to do here 
is that the part that you start with can't be a part of the thing you want to attach to your rocket. So I'm going to start with this Clampertron Junior because I have one of them on top of my rocket. Then I'm going to take another one, swivel it around, and attach it there. This one will be the first part of my rover. I will look into your soul. So welcome to the world's fifth worst rover. But I think it's probably good enough to put on top of my rocket. In any case, I kind of want to get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this tab up here, which you might have noticed appears after you place your first part. This is the sub-assemblies tab. What the sub-assemblies tab lets you do is take parts from one craft and put them onto another one. So if I select this docking port here, which if you remember is the first part of my rover but not the first part I placed, and I drag all of this into this thing marked sub-assembly drop zone down here, this dialog box pops up, so I'm going to give it a name such as Evil Rover or Hail the Evil Rover. So it's now saved up here. Back in the vehicle assembly building, I can now go to the sub assemblies tab, select the Evil Rover, and wouldn't you know it, here it is. I can just turn it around and pop it on the top like that. So now. I have a rover on the top of my rocket. Wonderful! So, those are the basics of building things in Kerbal Space Program. Thank you very much for watching. If you think there's anything I could have done better, or if there's something you'd like to see me do next, or if you just enjoyed the video, please leave a message in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.